the beauty of this system is that we can have stone. 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 And stone. What's up guys, it's Cody here, and today we're going to learn how to create our own custom blocks in Minecraft 1.9. And one of the features of these custom blocks will be that we can easily add unique behavior for when a player steps on the block. For example, a dirt block that created a particle effect when you stepped on it, or a sand block that you could move faster along, if you can tell. These are, of course, just a few examples in a long list of possible applications. So let's start building this thing. We have a blank canvas stretched out before us, and we're just about ready to begin. But before we start, let's think about what we want to keep track of for our custom blocks. Well, we want to know whether the player is standing on them currently. For that, we'll use a scoreboard tag. And we want to know how long the player has been standing on the block. For that, we'll use a scoreboard objective. So let's create that now. Scoreboard objectives add, we'll call it step. And it's a dummy scoreboard type. And let's display it on the sidebar as well. Scoreboard objective set display sidebar step. And that will display as soon as any entity has a step score. And now we're ready to continue. First off, we need a way to place our custom blocks, and we're going to do that using armor stands. So chuck down a command block, stick a button on it, and inside the command block we're going to type give nearest player armor stand, one armor stand with a damage value of zero. This is going to give us an ordinary armor stand. Nothing special about it, and that's the problem. See, our commands need to detect a special armor stand. So, to set it apart from the other stands, we are going to give this some scoreboard tags, or one scoreboard tag to be exact. And to do that, we need the entity tag, item tag. That's a bit confusing, I know, and it gets worse. Inside the entity tag, we have the tags entity tag. Square brackets here. And we're going to call our scoreboard tag block in it. Let's use a capital here. In it, short for initialize. So we place down this armor stand here. And now if we type in, say, at a tag equals block in it, we're going to find this armor stand. And if we remove this one, we're not going to find an armor stand with the block in it tag. So, now that we have our unique armor stand, we can get started on our first line of commands, the placement and destruction commands. At the moment, our armor stand is a rather long way from being any sort of a block. So, let's get started on fixing that. First thing we want to do is center it in its block space. Right now, it's at the very bottom of that space, so we want to teleport it up by half a block. So, let's go... TP all entities with the tag of block in it up by half a block. And to prevent it from falling straight back down again, we are actually going to add a no gravity one tag here and give ourselves the armor stand once again. And it's no longer affected by gravity, as you can see. After we teleport it up by half a block, centering it, we are going to give it a step score of zero. Scoreboard, players, players set, all entities with a tag of block in it. We're going to set their step score to zero. Except what's going to happen here if this chain runs infinitely, is it's going to just keep on teleporting upward into the sky. So we actually need to remove the block in a tag after these commands run, but not immediately afterwards, because then we can't use it to tell the armor stand to actually place its block. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something I like to call commands in reverse. It's something I discovered while programming. Basically, we put this command before these two, but make it dependent on these two running. So let me just type in the command. 
school board players tag all entities with a tag of block in it and with a minimum step score of 1, we're going to remove the block in it tag. So what's going to happen here? This command is going to fail because our armor stand does not yet have a step score. Hang on, we've got to set this to 0. So the armor stand doesn't yet have a step score when this first runs, but then these commands are going to run, and this one here is going to set its step score to 0. Then this command can run, but before it does, the all the other lines of command blocks we have will run as well. So we're going to place some down here, and then we'll have the opportunity to make the armor stand place the block it needs to. So... We're going to place that down and it's going to work, but before that happens, we need to make sure that the armor stand can be destroyed when we get rid of the block. So we're going to place this before that one. Let's just set it to active so we don't forget. And scoreboard players... No, hang on. I'm... Wrong command. Execute all entities with a tag of block in it. Sorry, a... all entities that don't have a tag of block in it, as you'll see by the exclamation mark there, all entities without the block in a tag, but with a minimum step score of zero. Execute from them, and if they detect at their location an air block with any damage value at all, they are going to kill themselves. So what we'll do is we'll copy this selector here, and at the end of it we're going to put R equals zero, C equals one. So it's only going to target an entity in a zero block radius, and the closest one. So it's only going to kill itself, basically. And what we're going to see here, if we've done everything right, is this armor stand instantly removes itself, because, of course, it detects air at its location, and it just dies. So we've got to chuck a command block down here, set this to always active, and we go execute at E. But in order to make this command only run for this specific custom block. What we have to do is give our armor stand a name. We'll go custom name checkpoint, because we'll give it a checkpoint behavior. Give ourselves this armor stand once again, and we can use this name in our command. So we'll go name equals checkpoint, don't forget the capitals, tag equals block init, score step min equals one. So what's going to happen is these commands are going to run, setting its step score to zero. Sorry, zero. Setting its step score to zero. And then it's going to be able to run, because it still has the block init tag. The commands haven't run again, but it does have a step score. We're going to execute from its location, and we're going to go set block at its location, and we're going to go... Um, we're going to set it to a stained hardened clay. Got to make sure I type this right. We'll give it a damage value of 5, because I believe that is lime stained clay. And if we place this down, there we go. It has set the block, and our block is ready. But before... Well, we sort of need to get rid of the armor stand, don't we? But without actually removing it, because we do need it. So we will go invisible 1 marker 1. What that's done is if we give ourselves the armor stand once again, is it's made our armor stand invisible and effectively removed the hitbox. So there's no chance of us accidentally destroying it or interacting with it. And now, the placement and destruction for our custom block is complete, and we can move on to the behavior. Although the armor stand inside this block is invisible, intangible, and rather easy to forget about, it is still very much there, and that's important because we need it to detect when a player is standing on the block and to run commands from the block itself. So the first thing we want to know is if a player is currently standing on the block, and for that, we're going to go execute all players just one two hundredth of a block below their feet. So it's going to run the command, when I'm standing here, it's going to run the command just inside that block. And then we're going to go scoreboard, players, tag, all entities, all entities with a minimum step score of zero, and in a zero block radius. Because the R 
argument, the radius argument, uses block coordinates, anything inside this block is going to be found using the r equals zero argument. So we are going to find the armor stand inside there, and we've added on the step on tag. But once we step off the block, the step on tag is still there. For that, we need to be constantly removing it right before we add it. So, scoreboard players tag all entities with the step on tag. Just remove the step on tag. And we're going to set this to always active so we don't forget to turn it on later and wonder what's going on. Now, when we're not stepping on the block, when it doesn't have the step on tag, we need to reset its step score back to zero. So, scoreboard players set all entities that do not have the step on tag, but all entities that are our custom block armor stands, so with a minimum step score of zero, we're going to set their step score back to zero. And all entities that do have the step on tag, scoreboard players add all entities that do have the step on tag, we are going to add one to their step score. So now what we're going to see is this incrementing behavior. Oh, no, we haven't seen it. Let's just check what's happening there. It does have the step on tag. Oh, we didn't add it back here. Okay, now that we've added it there, Let's just step on this, and there we go. If you can see that, the step score for this armor stand is rapidly increasing, and as soon as I step off, it's right back to zero. The base system is now fully complete, so we can begin work on the behavior for this individual block type. We want our custom block to have a checkpoint behavior, so it needs to do a few things. When I first stand on it, it needs to give off a particle effect and set my spawn point. And while I'm standing on it, it needs to give me a regeneration effect. Let's start with the particles. We'll go execute all entities with the name of checkpoint with a maximum step score of 1 and with a minimum step score of 1. So this command will only run on the very first tick that I am standing on it. Execute from its position, and we'll go particle, we'll use a slime particle, and we'll make it summoned half a block above the armor stand with a 0 by 0 by 0 radius, so only at the center of the block. We'll give it a speed of 0 0.1, a count of 100, and we'll set it to force, so no matter what your particle settings are, we'll see this particle. All right, that looks good. So let's move right along to the checkpoint behavior. Sorry, the spawn point behavior. And we're going to go... We need to execute from above it this time in order to target players that are standing on it. So we'll go spawn point. All players in a zero block radius from where the command is run. So it's going to run above this block. So only the players that are standing on it is it going to set the spawn point. And we'll just go relative coordinates like that, because it's already being run from above the block. Now let's try this out. If I step on this, and I go spawn, no, sorry, I go kill, and I spawn right here. And let's just try proving that by going spawn point here, and then standing there, and then kill once again. And here I am, back at our checkpoint. Now we're doing one last thing, the regeneration effect. So let's copy this command. And we'll just change this to regeneration um, one second amplifier of five. We'll set that to true so the particles don't show. Change change the spawn point to effect. Now we need to change this up a bit because this command here is only going to run when we first step on it. And we want this to be continuous while we're standing on it. So we have two options. Either a minimum step score of 1, or we just check for the step on tag. This is simpler, so I'm going to use this method. Alright, now we should get a regeneration effect when we stand on that, so I'll just go into game mode survival, and we'll give ourselves some instant damage and stand on this, and all our health is regenerated. Awesome. So we have completed 
the behavior for this block. That's all I have to teach you, but before you go, there are a few related tutorials that I recommend you watch. Samosaurus 6 made a tutorial on roof hanging, which deals with another form of custom blocks. Although, instead of creating entirely new blocks using armor stands, he modifies an existing block using execute detect. On top of that, Dragon has a video on custom items using fake NBT data. So I recommend all of you watch both of those videos, which I'll link in the description. But I hope you guys all enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next video.